Well, unless you've been hiding under a rock the last week, you would have heard that the stock market is crashing, or world stock markets are crashing, but are they really, or is now the time to get excited? Well, we'll answer those in a minute. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within, and joining me to answer those questions is Wealth Within's Senior Analyst, Philip Torteski. Hey, Phil. Good morning, Dale. Uh, panic, panic, panic. I look stressed, don't I? Uh, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, um, oh. like you've, you've mentioned as well, so many people ringing up saying, hey, is the stock market crashing? But um, I mean, we're gonna show, you know, once you put everything into perspective, the truth of the matter. Yeah, I know. It's the people who, like friends who are ringing me up and family going, is the market crashing? It's not our students and, and graduates because mm. they actually know a little bit better. But we are going to be taking you through some things today to so that you can sleep at night and sleep over the weekend. Now, we're recording this Friday morning. So last Friday was the big one-day fall, obviously, the one that really triggered all the news around the, the world stock markets are crashing. And we're three trading days on from Monday where the Australian market fell about 3.6%. But I thought I'd show you just a couple of things. Like on this morning, all I did this morning was turn on my computer and click on a browser on, on my Google browser, on my Google Chrome browser, and I just clicked on the search. And this came up, and what we actually saw here, I didn't type anything into the search. Yeah. And all that came up, and we saw trending searches, Nina Kennedy, Israeli news, stock market crash on the top line which is much more important than the rest of them. I mean, you look at the, the US election was down the bottom. You look at the Olympics was in the middle. You look at Israel was down there. You look at the tsunami that happened yesterday in Japan down on the bottom and yet the stock market crash, hey, that's got top billing. So I clicked on the stock market crash button there and it took me to another screen with all the news on it and this came up. And so that's what we're seeing. So it says stock market crash up the top. It's Microsoft Bing, as you can see. But it says this thing here, it's look at the picture. Stock market crash down on the bottom right. Geez, that's, that's, that's taken from a while ago, isn't that's it? That's 1929. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, thinking, well, hang on, we're in 2024 at the moment. So that's 1929. But it says the stock market recently experienced a significant crash causing widespread concern amongst investors. This downturn was triggered by several factors, including a change in Japan's interest rates and fears of a slowing US economy. The US economy's been slow for how long, Phil? Oh, years. Years. But it's, um, yeah, yeah. It, it's absolutely crazy. And as you say, I mean, right now, we're in this period where, um, you know, obviously technology is getting better and, and, and news is traveling so much faster. And again, we are gonna get into looking at the dynamics of what the market is actually doing. But what I find a lot of people, when, when markets are rising really, really strongly, yeah. it's all okay, nothing yeah. to worry about, it's normal. They can be parabolic on the way up, but the moment they take a, a dive to go back to the natural gradient of things, it's panic. It is panic, and it shows you, if you are somebody that's panicking in the marketplace right now, and you've seen the news and you're going, oh, what am I gonna do? Should I get out of the stock market? That's a big sign for you to saying you don't have enough knowledge. And it really is simple. If you have the knowledge, then you understand what you need to be doing because everything's cause and effect, isn't it, of Phil? Of course. It's like, doesn't matter what happens, it's what's the plan that you've got around all of that. And, and if you do have a plan, then you're not going to get caught in a crash ever. And that's the point here. But I want to go on to the next because I actually looked at some of these um, on that right, left-hand side of this screenshot through here, it's saying the top thing saying, you know, Monday stock market crash shows the AI revolution is in here. And there's a whole lot of articles here all around the stock market. So if you wanna click and go to the next bit, you'll see even this one's from Fortune, which is part of, and it's got coming yep. from Microsoft Network or MSN. And this one's the ABC, the Australian ABC saying, global stock market crash wipes billions off the ASX. And people reading that, or seeing just seeing those headlines, what is, what's their psychology doing? Oh, it'd be it'd be terrible. I mean, it'd be terrible to the psychology. But what would have been nice by the ABC was to report the previous three months how many billions were made on the stock market. Because as you know, since October, November, when our market found that low running up into this year, we've had you know the All Lords Index rise almost twenty percent. Mm. So we're talking significant moves. And let's take aside all the stocks within that, because obviously stocks move uh, much more volatile to an index. So you know the banks. Some yep. of the bank's CBAs up 40, 50%. Yes. I'd love to see that number printed on the ABC saying how many billions were created on that run up. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's just, I guess fear sells, good, right? Good news doesn't sell clicks. Yep. Bad news really sells a lot of people clicking on it and everything. But I want to go and take a look. I'm gonna, we, I clicked on then the Monday stock market crash from Fortune um, and it said the stock market recently experienced a significant crash. And this is what we're seeing. Major index like the S&P 500 
and the NASDAQ saw substantial decline. Well, obviously the S&P 500, 27 odd percent of it, or 28 or 29 percent of it is those big seven tech stocks. So yes. if they're falling, it's taken the S&P 500. So if we go to the next screenshot that I've got, looking at that. So this is the article coming up now and you can see worried signs on this gentleman's face. And it's like Monday stock market crash shows the AI revolution is not quite here. How do they know that? <laughs> How do they know that? Yeah. Somebody must be a genius. But if you click again, and we'll go actually into the first paragraph. This is what the first paragraph says. After months of worrying about AI bubbles, interest rates, big tech elections, inflation, geopolitics, recession risk and more, that's a lot of things to worry about. Have you been worried about those? No, I mean, look, and the, the, I guess the interesting thing about global markets is in spite of all that plus rising tensions around the world, markets have been humming along, they have. rising so, so strongly. So despite all of this supposed negative news oh. around the world, we're seeing huge runs up. As you said, the big tech has, you know, really led the way in the US. But I mean, even our market, that we've we've said, you know, the tech market in Australia, yes. although it's not the a big chunk of our- It's only 4% It is, market. but it's it's run really strong. Financials, which obviously are the big player on our mm. market, have made a fantastic run. But the materials are the ones that have held our market, or I guess been the underperformers. Now, what's interesting during this crash, or supposed- Supposed cr crash. Supposed <laughs> crash, was that there were stocks in that top 20 that still performed. Yes. That went up. That so went up. And that just shows people they shouldn't be panicking. But I mean, just going back onto the thing, it says, you know, investors saw their fears come to life yesterday as global stock markets plunged. Mm. Fears come to life. It's, it's really emotional. It says Japan's benchmark index shrunk 12%. Now, Japan or the, the, the Nikkei uh, is down about 25 or 26%. Yep. Over, not over the last week, we're talking about over the last six or seven weeks. So it was already falling away already because what we find is when you get the announcements come out, it's already happening. Somebody in the, is already in the know and they actually know what's actually going on and they're making their decisions. So what actually happened? Do you want to explain what happened in Japan? Well, what actually happened was that uh, the Japanese, obviously, interest rates were at zero. So there was uh, lending or they were taking out loans and pumping it into the stock market, US market. And the Bank of Japan raised rates, caused a bit of fear in the, I guess, uh, people with the loans, investors, which saw selling in the uh, where the money was uh, sent, which into was in the, the, US. In the US market. So, um, yeah, it's very interesting. And, you know, that whole dynamic about when you talk about when markets rise and when they crash. Now, you know, what a lot of people need to think about, obviously, 29 was a major crash on, mm. our, on the US market. And that unfolded over years. The 07 crash that happened, that unfolded a, a year and a bit. So yes. markets don't crash in a day. They don't crash in a week. They take time to unfold. And to understand that dynamic of why that happens, that's so important because the majority holders in any market are the big institutions, mm. are the big companies. And for a market to uh, dip or fall uh, instantaneously, that, I guess, eliminates a lot of that ability for that smart money to exit at mm. a profitable position. So what you'll see, sharp falls generally reply with sharp rises. Mm. Real crashes take time to unfold. And you yeah. see it so clearly in a chart. Yeah, you do. And people you know, people often say, well, what, what makes a stock market crash? And they think more sellers. Well, it's not. We run out of buyers. Mm. So when there's sellers in the market, you're not cra it's not actually crashing. It's because nobody's left to buy. But as we've seen the rest of this week, the buying's happening and we're going to bring up a chart in a second on that but really this is an exciting thing and if we're going to go to the let's go to the next slide this one is actually of Dow's theory of the market so when you look at this this is our road map and we teach this to all of our students even in you know our more beginner courses we actually teach this because it actually is your gps about where the market's um, running and where it's likely to go to because you can't make money on the left hand side of the chart because that's what's happened we make money on the right-hand side of the chart. So this is showing, showing how the market unfolds, and there's three movements up on the bull phase and three movements down on the bear phase. Now, I'm not going to talk a lot about that today. We're going to talk about a little bit more on our Monday market report where Phil, talk about, well, Phil and I will talk about what's hot and what's not in our marketplace. So check out our video on Monday. But basically, we haven't done rampant speculation, which is the top of a bull market. Mm. We haven't done that yet. So how do we come on the crash side? And when you look at the, the economics around this, about when crashes occur, there's a whole lot of economic reasons why the stock market's not crashing. But I did want to get into the world markets and just show everybody where the world markets are. So let's do that now. All right. Well, on the screen, as we're looking at here, here's a watch list of the all of the world markets, the major world markets. And you can see here, we've actually done this in, in, the, in the order of which one's fallen the worst? So to get, see at the top here, it says, it says the COSPI 200 index is down 5.6%. 
Polish index down 3.9%, Taiwan's down 3.5%. You get down to Singapore down 3.52%. But here is the Nikkei down here around 3%, which is the Japanese market, the one that's crashed. And this is for the week. We're seeing, then we're seeing the Nifty 50 in, in um, India down 2.43. Where's the US? Dow Jones right down the bottom there, down minus 0.73. The NASDAQ down 0.69. The FTSE down 0.53. The S&P 500 down 0.51. But look, now we're starting to see green on the bottom. So the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index is up 0.13. Yeah. You know, we're seeing Mexico up, Tel Aviv's up, you know. Vienna stock exchange is up, the FTSE Africa all share is up. They're all up there. Let's go to the monthly one now and have a quick look at the monthly, where they're going, the monthly places, because one day doesn't make a sheep station or doesn't make you rich or doesn't make you broke. It's a series of movements over multiple days, weeks and months. So the bigger term moves. And when we look at the monthly, let's go back up to the top and see where they all are on a monthly basis. And again, Tokyo down 11.88% for the month. Mm. So it was already falling before last Friday and obviously Monday. Um, Nikkei down 10.92. And we keep moving down. And where are we going to straight times index down 5.62 for the month. NASDAQ comp 5.34. It's down. So I don't know about you, mate. That's not a crash to me. No, but I'm, and, and the typical, uh, I guess, um, numbers of a crash, normally we say a 20% fall is a correction in the market. Anything past 20 up into the 50 mark is a crash or deemed a Correct. crash, which is what we saw during 2007 and 2008. But yeah. the, the 5 10% falls and rises on the market, particularly the falls, they are within that natural ebb and flow because just one look at a chart, and I employ everyone out there to go and take a look at a chart. You can go on Google and just type in any chart out there of a market you will see that it doesn't either move straight up or straight down. It ebbs and flows within waves up and down. And those moves typically mm. 5, 10%, 15%. So right now, we're sitting in that natural flow of uh, 5 to 10%. Yeah, and I know, um, and just to wrap up, I know a lot of people on YouTube will be going, oh, you guys don't know what you're talking about. And they'll go, hey, look, this is what's happening. I'm reading all this stuff. They want you to read all of that stuff. And the thing is, I heard all this during 2022. Constantly, people saying the stock market's crashing, videos coming out. Robert Kiyosaki was the king of that. Every single, every month, there was another going to be another crash. And we keep seeing those sorts of things, and yet the market didn't crash. I don't think the market's going to crash. Now, I could be found out wrong. I could actually be found out wrong, and it might crash. But the chances of that, to me, would be less than 5%. You know, it is very, very low risk that the stock market will crash. And the reason why I say it's very low is why it could crash is simply because we don't control the markets. There could be something happening in the world that does it. But right now, everything that we're looking at, the stock market's not going to crash. This is opportunity time in which what we're going to show you on Monday in our What's Hot and What's Not report, we'll show you some great opportunities. We'll talk a bit about the market. We'll bring up some charts of the S&P, the Dow Jones with the Australian market, and we'll show you why we don't think it's going to crash. Anything you want to add before we go? Look, one last thought is just take one look behind you on that S&P 500 index chart. And particularly mm. this week, you can see mm. the market opening through there. It's already closing 300, almost 200 points up. So yes, take, take everything with a grain of salt. The unbiased information that you'll see in terms of where the market's heading is in that price chart. So please take a look. And I'm with you. I mean, it takes time. So Also, check out our live YouTube stream on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. We'll also be bringing up the sectors of the market and telling you just where what we think of them. But that's it from us. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.